Afternoon, gang. It's Wednesday, the 17th of May 2017. A warm welcome along to this afternoon's United Kingdom talk. Yes, it. Where's that music coming from? <laughs> I keep getting. I don't know what it is, but I keep seem to be getting random music playing through my um uh my systems here. I'm not quite sure where it's coming from. I've got. If you can see this on here, actually, can you can you see that there? You may maybe you can. I've got lots of tabs open here. You see, oh, oh, there it is. It's come from the BBC. It's coming from the Daily Mail. Maybe I can mute that. Just a minute. Let me try something. Has that muted that? Oh, it's not playing now. Ah, so I think it seems to come from one of the things I've got open up here. Can you see that? Or well, maybe, maybe a little bit too far. I've got all these tabs open of uh, of just general stuff that I want to talk about on the show today. Very, very strange indeed. Anyway, welcome along to today's uh, United Kingdom talk, boys and girls. Um, I've just been on Facebook this morning. Um, I'm a member, you know, there's lots of like various different Facebook groups about this, that and the other. And this will interest you if you're over... Over 45-ish. I don't know. If you're under 45, you might not know what we're talking about here. But we'll try it anyway. Um, I'm on this uh, uh, Facebook group, Classic British Television, from the 60s, 70s and 80s. And uh, a chap up there, uh, William Bodie, has put... Uh, basically, you, you put on things that you remember about old television. Now, if you know me, you will know I love old television. A lot of the new stuff on now, uh, certainly the comedy stuff, I just do not get it. You know, So-called comedy. I mean, the in-betweenies. Anyone seen that? Oh, what the hell is all that about? It's just not funny. The in-betweenies. And there's so much of it on there, I'll tell you. And I just don't find it uh, amusing at all. Whereas in the 70s, when I was a child, we were howling at the telly. Absolutely howling. You wouldn't like watch um, shall we say, a half hour programme in the hope that you may laugh a couple of times. Oh, no, no. I mean, the credits would roll on certain programmes and literally as they finished, you would start laughing. Now, I'm going to play you a little tune before I read who this person is, OK, that they're talking about this morning on the on the on the. Um, on the Facebook group Classic British Television, Classic British Television from the sixties, seventies, and eighties. I'm going to play you a little tune, and uh, I'm sure, especially I think Ray Reynolds is with us this afternoon, and I just know that you are going to know what this is. Are you ready? Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh yeah. Any idea? Come on, what is it? <laughs> Come on! Oh, you can't, you can't not know what that is, can you? That is the theme music to the fantastic uh, Dick Emery show. And you've got something, there's something seriously going wrong with my stuff today. There is. And he was just fantastic. I found, I actually found a little article in uh, the Telegraph today, boys and girls. And it says, Dick Emery, the neglected superstar of TV comedy. Now, this article was written um, uh, on the 25th of uh, January, a couple of years ago. But let me just read it out to you. And it, it, this is so true. Dick Emery was hilarious. I've got a picture of um, some of the characters that he plays, because he used to play various different characters, all right? There's a picture there in front of you there. We've got the vicar there, top left-hand corner. I think that's the vicar there. Uh, on, now, I don't remember their names, unfortunately. The lady second one along with, like, the blonde hair. That, this is all Dick Emery. Oh, no, that's not the vicar, is it? Who's that guy? Is he, Was he a bank clerk? I can't remember now. Uh, the, the second one along, she was all posh and, and prim and proper. She's quite funny. The one at the below him is the vicar there. The one bottom right is like a sex-starved middle-aged woman. Yeah, I mean, aren't we all? 
Let's be honest. <laughs> Aren't we all girls? So there's a little picture of uh, Dick Emery there, boys and girls, of various different pictures. Let me read this. It says, For nearly two decades, the Dick Emery show dominated Saturday night television with audiences of up to 17 million people. Now... <laughs> These people on the telly now can only dream of such figures these days. They don't get anything like it. And there are some good shows on, I suppose. Uh, nope, can't think of any at the moment, but I'm sure. I mean, I, I think the last the last good lot of comedy shows for me was stuff like um, Absolutely Fabulous. Um, who was the posh one? Da, 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 keeping Up Appearances. Really, that, that was the last lot of funny stuff for me. I watch some of this stuff now and, and no, it just doesn't. Anyway, the, 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 the article goes on. Audiences up to 17 million, pe million a night were common during the... How many series of the Dick Emery show do you think were? Any idea? 18 series. That's longer than Dallas. That is longer than Dallas. There were 18 series of the Dick Emery Show, 166 episodes shown from 1963, which is when I was born, until 1981. Uh, but today, Emery has been largely forgotten. And I don't get this. I don't get this. Now, let me just take you back to that picture I just showed you. OK? Now, if you're of an age, you probably, like me, won't be offended by any of that. You know what I mean? But some people are, and I don't get it. Why don't they see the funny side of it? Certainly, um, the one who played, uh, the one who went, uh, oh, hello, honky tonks. We used to sit there and, and, and howl at that. Now, I'm gay. I'm not offended by any of that. Why are people offended by this stuff? Strange. Anyway, that, that's another subject which I've, gone, I've done, done to death over the years, as you well, well know. Um, it says Emery is largely being forgotten. It says, does he deserve better? Now, this is written by a go bloke called uh, Martin Chilton. And as I say, the article itself is, is three years old. Um, does he deserve better? Comedian and writer David Walliams certainly thinks so. I'm sure you've heard of him. Uh, now, I thought David Walliams, now I thought he was good in, in Little Britain, right? X Factor, he just comes across as someone a bit smarmy, doesn't do... Not X Factor, uh, that other blooming son and cow thing. You know, Britain's got no talent or something like that, innit? Doesn't do it for me, David Williams anymore. Williams anymore. Um, uh, but he's called Emery, who died in 1983 at the age of 67, one of the country's finest character comedians whose work has been sadly neglected. And I don't know why. We never see it repeated, do we? I mean, do any of those satellite channels show the Dick Emery show. Why not? I mean, surely that's something that you could stick over on BBC Two and we can all enjoy it again. I mean, they've got Dad's Army. They've got good viewing figures for Dad's Army. Still now, they're still repeating that. Not on, on Saturday nights. Around about eight o'clock, I think it's on Dad's Army. Walliams, along with Charlie Higson and David... Badiel, I don't know who they are, uh, pay tribute, have paid tribute in a BBC documentary, The Many Faces of Dick Emery, which uh, has been on some time ago. And um, it, it goes on, really. Um, it says, uh, I, I found a, another thing here that, uh, uh, I can't find it now. Um, he, he was actually terrified. He, he had bad stage fright, Dick Emery. Did you know that? And I think he went into um, uh, hypnosis and all that sort of thing to cover that. Anyway, there's some people putting some comments. Uh, as I say, a guy called William Bodie has put this post on Facebook. And uh, here we go. Mathlander says, oh, you are awful, but I like you. Whack. Do you remember that one? <laughs> I love it. Do you have any favourite memories of Dick Emery that you'd like to share with us this afternoon, boys and girls? Because if you do, there's a phone number and you can call in. It's up there on the screen right now. 020 3477 is my local London phone number. Not a premium rate number. 020 3477 is our local London number. Uh, if you've got Skype, you can Skype in. Our Skype name is United Kingdom Talk. So two ways of uh, calling in if you want to. 020 3477 or you can Skype in on United Kingdom Talk. Either will work, my darlings. All right, give us a call now. Um, um, and I'll read these out. Uh, Steve Graham says, I love the old Lampwick. He was the, the old bloke with a little little sort of round specks on the end of his nose, wasn't they? 
Did you have a favourite? Um, uh, let's have a look here. Uh, Jennifer. Jennifer says, how does keep Keith Lemon, a.k.a. Lee Francis, keep getting all those shows? And I totally agree with this. Like Through the Keyhole, now with Paddy McGuinness. Now, I don't find him funny. Is Paddy McGuinness the one that does the science programmes as well? <laughs> you know, uh, the Keith and Paddy picture show, which I, I can't I can't say I, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. But on the other hand, just that, just that hearing the name Keith Lemon makes me not want to look at it. I just find him totally and utterly unfunny. You get those. Um, I don't want this to turn into a Keith Lemon bashing thing. But how do these people keep getting all these shows when they're just not remotely funny? They sit there on those panel shows, you know, various different celebrities, Holly Willoughby and a few others. They sit there cackling and laughing and just being rude, basically. Where is the comedy in that? We don't get it, do we? Um, I simply hated what they did on Dirty Dancing the first week it was on. Haven't seen that. Uh, there's only one Johnny and it was Patrick Swayze. Oh, yeah. I've had the time of my life. That old business. I like that one. And uh, I have the special 20th anniversary edition on DVD. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, Helen says, I love Dick Emery and funny chap. Bless him. Chaz says, but you are awful. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I are awful. And he used to whack someone. You are, he was dressed as a woman. You are awful. Oh, was that the woman? Yes, it was the woman with the blonde hair, wasn't it? You are awful, but I like you. Whack. And um, and, and someone would go over, you know, fall over. Um, there was a gay character he portrayed with little flowery beret, little bag over the shoulder and multicolours. And he'd come... Oh, hello, honkatonks. How are you? We used to have... I still find that hilarious. How can you possibly be offended by something like that? Get alive, please. You know, get alive. Jennifer says, uh, of course, Roy Kinnear. Now, Roy Kinnear, I fixed his telephone, Roy Kinnear. He used to live in Roehampton. He's, uh, he's died now. I think I've seen his son on the television as well recently in the last few months. Anyone seen Roy Kinnear's son? Anyway, he was, he was great as well. And he used to do, um, didn't they do the father and the son thing? Yes, the father and the son. That's right, yes. Roy Kinnear used to be in George and Mildred as well, as well as a plumber, although he was used to... Yeah, but he was hilarious, Roy Kinnear. Another great comedian. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Anyway, I've put a couple of... Uh, i put a little link to one of the sketches on the uh, classic British television uh, wall there about Dick Emery when he did a, a prison sketch. So he was dressed as a middle-aged lady, the sex-starved middle-aged lady, uh, Hetty. I think her name was Hetty. And basically, she goes on to this, goes up to this prison, knocks on the door. Prison ward gnomes. Hello, can I help you, madam? Oh, yes. I've come to see the prisoners. I want to talk to them, you know, so that it makes them feel a little bit better, she says. And the warden says to them, oh, no, I don't think that's a good idea, lady. Oh, no, some of these prisoners, they haven't seen a woman in years. I don't know what would happen to you. And she goes, oh, that's all right. I'm prepared to take the risk and all that. No, I don't think so. And he closes the door in her face. And then the camera cuts to a... Oh, what those things? A, a, a furniture, a, a, like a removals van. You know, the great big tall ones. And this is coming round a corner and the camera pans up and there's Hetty on the roof of the van like this and it stops at the wall. She throws a rope and climbs in. She climbs into this, to the, up to the prisoners. And then the next thing, the camera's cut to the front door again and the prisoners open the door and they say, go on, get out your old bag. We don't want you in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious the Dick Emery show you've, you've got to watch that you've actually got to watch it there are entire episodes on um, on YouTube which you can look up just type in Dick Emery not while I'm doing this if you don't mind my darlings uh, just type it into YouTube and uh, you should find some bits and pieces on there okay if you want to call in about Dick Emery this morning please feel free to do so 020 3477 uh, Jonathan Lewis says, oh, you are awful, but I like you. I remember his show on a Saturday night and at the end was a feature called The Comedy of Errors, which showed the outtakes of the show and who can never forget Gaylord. Now, I don't remember the outtakes. 
I don't remember the outtakes, actually. I'm sure they were funny. I'm sure they were funny. But it, it would be nice um, to see that, wouldn't it, on, uh, on, on one of the, perhaps, well, BBC Two, hopefully. You know, if not one of the satellite channels. I mean, I don't have any... I don't have subscription television at all. I, I refuse to pay for television. I'm sorry. When I was a child, all television was free. Boxing, football, films. It was, you know, dramas. It was all free. Why should I subscribe to someone to watch something that I used to watch for free as a child? Yeah, I know it's all changed, but I'm, oh, I'm middle-aged now and I don't like change. I'm a bit like that, I'm afraid. Let's say hello to some of you this morning who are joining us. Oh, this afternoon, sorry, you're joining us. Hello to Jerry. Thank you for sharing the... Uh, oh, by the way, some people like to share the video on their walls. I can see some people have done that this morning. Thank you very much for that. It's always appreciated, OK? Hello to Jerry. Hello to lovely Joanna. Uh, this afternoon. Yes, right, Joanna. Hello to Mark Cording. Good afternoon, Mark. Uh, have you got a new job or something, Mark? I think I saw that you had a new job somewhere, did you? Uh, hello to Tanya. Hello, lovely Tanya. Diane's with us. Uh, we are having a lovely day. It's pouring down with rain today, but it's not cold. It's not cold at all. And it wasn't cold last night either. It's actually quite well. I got wet, but not cold, which was nice because I've just been up to the... I shouldn't really tell. Can I, can I whisper this? You mustn't tell it. Promise not to tell anyone. I've just been up to the train station again to get a load more metros. Yeah. When I say a load more metros, I, I go up there with a carrier bag. Well, two carrier. It's a, actually a Waitrose bag. I go up there with a Waitrose carrier bag. And, you know, mind you, by this time of day, most people have got their metros. So it's only the, the rest that are left over. And I use the metros because I've got an incontinent cat. She completely inc never uses the cat tray. She, and I've got the whole kitchen floor covered in metro newspapers so they sit and it's all recycling dear it all goes in the recycling bin thank you very much um hello to ray reynolds hello ray reynolds how are you this morning this afternoon sir um uh nathan's with us this afternoon good afternoon nathan uh, matthew joplin says you are normally asleep at this hour dear no i'm not look at your clock what time do you think it is matthew what time do you think it is I don't go to bed at two o'clock in the afternoon. You see, it makes me laugh. All these people see, think they know you really well. You don't know me at all, dear. Bed at half past two. Do me a favour. Three o'clock usually. Sometime between three and five I go to bed. Never half past two. I mean, just because you got your lazy ass out of bed at this time of day. I know how lazy... I suppose you were out again last night in Soho. At your age, dear. I mean, they must look at you when you when they, when you go in those little twinky gay bars now. Oh, Christ, he's looking a bit old. Don't you get that now, Mark Matthew? I'm sure you do, because looking at your photo, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't, lovey. God, you're a bit old to be going out, aren't you, love? You must be, Are you 40 yet? You're 40 now, aren't you? I mean, I can do it, because I'm a celebrity. You know, big star on television, I am. Television personality. I can walk anywhere until I'm like, you know, I'm 54 years old. I can still, oh, God, oh it's Chris Reardon, you know, like that. Not you, love. Who's that old bloke? Don't know him. It's a bit like... <laughs> when are we going to have another little dinner? I quite enjoyed that. Uh, hello to Sharon Stone. Good afternoon, Sharon. Uh, Joanna says the 70s were the best times for television. I think you're absolutely right. I think you're absolutely... Of course, I wasn't, I wasn't really around. I mean, in the 60s, I was a tiny, tiny, tiny person, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't really know what the television was then. I don't... Do you know, I don't remember us having a television. In a, um, we, we, we lived in Peckham from 1963 to 1969. I don't seem to... I can't remember what the living room was like, even. I remember my bedroom, and I remember the balcony and the kitchen. That would have been sort of 1960, I don't know, 1965, 66, something like that. Right, oh, can I just do something on my computer? I've got all these little things here. I, I, I'm just, I don't know what all this is here coming up. Just a moment, my darlings. Uh, I think they're missed calls or something. You haven't been calling in. I haven't missed your calls, have I? Is that it? That's done, OK. 020-8144-3477 if you want to call in this afternoon. If you just want to sit there and listen, that's fine as well, OK. Uh, Sharon says, I loved George and Mildred and On the Buses. Oh, fantastic. Have you seen any of these, Joanna? Have you seen Dad's Army, 
Dick Emery, George and Mildred on the buses, a mother makes three. Oh, so many. Who was the bloke that used to do that against a mirror? Oh, I can't remember that. But so many, many funny, funny people. Dad's Army, of course. Are you being served? Um, that one in the jungle. Like they were in a jungle. Um, it ain't half hot, Mum. Wonderful, wonderful programmes. What you got now? I'm a celebrity jungle. Get me out of here. Oof. Hello to Mark Larney. Good afternoon from Belfast. Ah, the Irish are here today. My favourite people. Hello to the Irish. Hello, Mark. Um, Nathan says, do you watch EastEnders? No. Do you know what the last... When I stopped watching EastEnders was just after Den and Angie got divorced. Honest, that's when I stopped watching it. <laughs> that's a few years ago, that is. I think it was still in black and white at that point. Was it still in black and white? I don't know. <laughs> we got a call coming in. Hello, who's that, please? It's Danny. Hello, Danny. How are you? I'm not too, uh, not too bad, thank you. How are you? Television, then. Off you go. Television. My first comedy um, thing that I used to enjoy was Only Fools. Only Fools and Horses. Only... Oh, yes. Great favourite of my father's. He used to love that. Sun Sunday the, nights, the... wasn't it? Uh, I can't remember because remember it was back end of eighty eight. Well, back end of eighties. I was born. Right. So, so I, they still show it today on 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 television. They do um, How... on the um, the most funniest one I've ever seen is the one with the blow up dolls in the back of the the car. I remember that one as well. Yes, yes. Did you ever see any Dick Emery? Um, no. Can I, I can I ask you to watch that and um. And then just let me know what you thought, what you think of it. It might be an age thing that you just don't find it funny. I, I don't know, because I, I come across this time and time again now as I'm getting uh, getting older. But I do I do like um, comedy from today, like uh, Mrs. Brown's quite good. Right. Um, I haven't seen that, I must admit, no. Mrs. Brown's Boys is quite good. Um, you know, it, it's just comedy today is not like they used to make it. And I was talking about this to to somebody that I work with the other day, and they were, um, the one with the guy that used to do the window was Tony Hancock. Tony Hancock, yeah, Hancock's Half Hour. Um, yeah, I can recommend that very, very, very funny of his, The Blood Donor. Have you seen The Blood Donor? I haven't. No. Oh, it's very, very funny. And remember, this stuff was made before you and me, and some of it before I was born. So why do and Lauren Hardy? Let's go back really far. Lauren Hardy, did you, did you ever see I Lauren Hardy? I love them. Huh? I love classic funny comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they don't make it like they used to. No, it's... I don't think they do. Does Keith Lemon do it for you? No, not at all. Not at all. What about those? Like, because a lot of those panel games, you know, where you got celebrities, not not stars, celebrities on there. Do, do they do it for you? What things like celebrity juice and all that celebrity kind of stuff? Juice. No, it, it doesn't really appeal to me. Have I got news for you? That's one, isn't it? Is that still on now? I, I don't like that either. No, because it's because it, it's poli it's political, isn't it? Have I got oh, news for it? you? And it's I all. I, I just as soon as I see it, I turn off anyway. I just wonder if it's very political. Wants... Yeah, it's, it's kind of like I do wonder sometimes that they're just trying to s fill up the space, you know, the sp the the air time because they've got nothing else to put on there. I suppose in I a know. way. Um, to make a situation comedy like Dad's Army, I would imagine that would cost a lot more money than something like, like a like a panel show, wouldn't it? Yeah, because they have to go out on location and they have to, you know, do all the, the all the actors and stuff yes. and yeah. that. But again, Dad's Army didn't appeal to me. I didn't find it funny. Right. Okay. Okay. How old are you? I think I'm t I'm 28. So. You're still very, very young, dear, aren't you, lovey? I know, I know. But uh, on another note, how did you enjoy your holiday? Oh, it was fantastic. Thank you very much. I think we spoke about some of the some of the things going on there. They they weren't good at mixing sound, and apart from that, it was all right. Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, not bad at all. There are a few ghastly, dreadful people that appeared on Friday, unfortunately. The people that come you... at the weekend, a little loud mouths, you know. And, you know, and Haven Holidays to me is like a family thing. When you've got like youngsters walking around with cans of lager, and there were, 
There were like groups of lads and girls and boys walking around with cans of lager and things like that. It wasn't like it, it was. Um, um, it was my. I would go back there, but it was my most unfavourite haven that I've been to so far. And I think that mm. was, so that was the third one, wasn't it? I've been to Wild Duck. Uh, what was that? And there was another one as well. I can't remember now. Um, the one in the one in Yorkshire, wasn't it? Yes, one in Yorkshire. Yes. Because um, you went to Caister. Yes, that was the one I've just come back from. So yeah, I was um, a little bit disappointed, to be honest. Um, but well, not not disappointed enough for me not to go back there again. The the swimming pool was fantastic. Oh, it was massive. Yeah, they, they do. They do like. Yeah, to, it was. It was like a normal size pool. Board. Yeah. Anyway, my darling, thanks for calling in. Thank you. Take care. Have fun. Bye, bye, Danny and Wales. Bye. There, boys and girls. He's a, a manager of uh, of uh, of of Greg's the Bakers. Mention United Kingdom Talk if you're in Wrexham, in North. I think it's North Wales, and you might get a pasty half prize. All right, let me just put this up again. Put that in there, save that there. Okay, just a reminder, gang, I can only take one phone call at a time. So if you're calling in while I'm chatting to someone, you'll just get, um, I think it goes to answer phone, okay? But a line is free now if you want to chat away. 020 8144 is my phone number. 020 8144 Uh Back to these. Bum, bum, bum. Joanna says, Fernwood Tonight was also very funny. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't. Fernwood. What's that one about? Don't know. No. Grant. I think Grant was just trying to call in. Grant, do you want to try now? I have a line free now, Grant, if you want to call in now. Um, Joanna says, uh, yes, Fernwood Tonight. I've never heard of Fernwood Tonight. Is that a British one or an American one? Don't know that one, Joanna. Really don't know that one, Joanna. Uh, Matthew uh, Joplin who's very old now, says he likes Harry Hill's TV burp. Um, yes, that, that one's not too... Out of new stuff, actually, that one's not too bad. But I wish he'd get rid of that stupid collar. It's like an egg in a collar, isn't it? It's <laughs> he looks like an egg in a collar, the way he's sitting there in that, uh, in that thing there. Hello to Tony. Hello to Tony today. Greetings to you, Tony. Thanks for joining us live at last. Tony's with us live. He's popping down to the karaoke on a Friday night this week. Shania's with us. Hello, Shania. Um, Craig says, stop saying it's morning, it's afternoon. I know, Craig. I get very, very confused with my times, I'm afraid. Oh, look who's calling in now. It's, it's nephew Jimmy Butler. Good afternoon, Jimmy. Good afternoon. Hello, how are you? I'm oh, very well, thank you. How are you? What did you do you know what we're talking about? TV programmes. TV programmes. Now you're a fan of the Inbetweeners, aren't you? Uh yeah, I like it. Yeah. yeah. Did, I like only four horses. Did you go and see the film? Yeah, I did, yeah, both of them. And you like that as well? Not as good as the uh, series. Right. What sort yeah, of films are alright? What sort of comedy TV programmes um, could I put, like, on your telly now uh, and that you'd sit there and laugh like, like laugh out loud to them? Incidentally, in young person's term, that is, of course, L-O-L. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, celebrity Juice. Who? Celebrity Juice. So you like that whole Keith Lemon thing. You get that, do you? Yeah, but I didn't... I also sit and watch um, Only Fools and Horses. Only Fools and Horses. And you find that funny? Yeah, I do. Yeah, what about do. Dad's Army? Uh, I get. I lose interest after a few. Yeah, as Danny, he's um, he's a bit older than you. He's. I think he said he was twenty six. He 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 says he doesn't find that funny at all. You see, and I I Mate. just sit. I could watch. I could sit there all day watching Dad's Army. Did you ever see Dick Emery? Don't think so. No, no. no I, think, I don't think so. I think I might have to little post a little a little thing on your wall there. Um, oh, anything? fantastic, Mrs. Brown, Mrs. Brown. No, I don't find that funny at all. You don't find that oh, funny? Crap, wow, rubbish. Yeah. If there was I don't a funny, funny. If there was a TV series that you th is the funniest, what about Absolutely Fabulous? Never seen it. Never even heard of it. Oh, you must have seen that. That was that was nineties. 
I think you were even born when that was on. What's it? What's, what is it? What, okay. What's it doing on it? It's, um... Oh. Not Dawn French, the other one. Jennifer Saunders. Okay. And Patsy. Yeah. And Patsy. Oh, hello, sweetie. Hello, sweetie. And they're always doing drugs and smoking and getting drunk. No, I don't think they are. And they're no. very rich. No, I'm not saying that. I've not even heard of it. Oh, wow. I think you I might... At least find... like the one where um, there's an old couple. They go around in the car. Yep. And they're... Oh, what's it called? I can't think what it's called. About late 2000s. Early 2000s, sorry. No, don't know oh, what that is. What is it called? I can't think. Not sure what that was. I don't know. Jim, can you sing? I can't sing, no. Well, no. I'm thinking of doing my own car karaoke show. What do you reckon? What? Well, like James called. Excuse me, I have... Yes. Yes, I've already signed someone up who is very interested. <laughs> yes, only <laughs> Nicky French, who represented the UK in the Eurovision Song Contest in the year of 2000, or was it 1999? One of the two. I don't know. I could put a little, Sorry? little camera in your in your because you you your car is signed by that that DJ, isn't it? What's his name? Uh, Tinchy Strider. Tinchy Strider. Yeah. He, my nephew, has met Tinchy Strider, and he is small, isn't he? Just one of the many celebrities that I know in my oh, phone book. Uh, yeah, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> well, thank you for calling in, Jimmy Butler International. <laughs> thank you. Nice Goodbye, to talk Chris to you. Bye, bye, nephew. There we are. There's my nephew, Jimmy Butler International. Oh, we're busy on the phones today. Hello, who's calling in now, please? Hello. Hello, who's that? Hi, um, I'm calling. I'm an old, old friend of Chris Reardon. It's the diva mother, Paula Pure, from Belfast. Paula Pure, lovely how lovely to hear you. I work a lot with Chris. I know yeah. the lovely Paula Pure. Hello, darling. Oh, can you turn that um, that computer down? Because I'm coming back at myself. Chris, darling, listen. Yes. Chris, I'm just calling to say I want to wish you all the best with your show. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm loving watching you here at the moment. I've got a guest over from London, actually. It's um, the Miss Minnie Diamond, and it's her birthday. She flew over yesterday for us. Oh, the and lovely she's Mark. Her 40th birthday today, and we're on our way down to Belfast to have a great time downtown. We've already had two bottles of champagne, which is ridiculous. It sounds like it. Absolutely. But Chris, I want to say, I want to say a big thank you. It's been such a long time since I've seen you, Chris, and I remember doing Black Cap with you many times, Penny Farthing and Central, and I'm all over the place with you, actually, and you were one of my best DJs ever recording for me. You did the best sound ever in all my days with all those boys behind me, and I loved every minute working with you. It's such a lovely time. I've got one of your old CDs I remember you recorded for me, and you gave it to me as a gift of one of your early, early shows. But it's lovely to talk to you, Chris. How are you, baby? I'm really well. I'm 50, I'm 54 now, Paula. You made well, you bought little. I don't want to tell you how old I am, but I'm getting there. You know what I mean? Are There's you... only one older diva than me, and that's and that's Ruby Venezuela, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> She's How is getting it? on a bit, but bless her, she still has me over every time I come to see her. Is Ruby dance, still doing the, the is, is Ruby still doing shows? Ruby's about. She hasn't been too well for a while, Chris, oh. you know, over the years. She's been in and out of hospital for a while, but she's doing okay at the moment. She's back out again. I get all my I get all my reflections and everything from back from Minnie and whatever over in London because I'm living in the I got I retired a while ago and I moved back over home again with family and friends and I live up in the mountains now. How just beautiful. in a little village outside Belfast. Fast and it's beautiful. Minnie's out in the garden at the moment. <laughs> oh, that sounds so nice. You know, I am. I my sister lives up in uh, Lincolnshire, and whenever yes. I go up there, you know, you, 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 I mean, I, in a way, I'm sort of half in the country where in Bracknell, I'm surrounded by trees and grass. But there, yes. you know, ide ideal place to live: house with nothing behind, in front, or to the sides. You understand oh, what Chris, I mean? Not lovely. That's what I'd like. Um, but I don't know. If, I don't know if I could ever leave where I am, really. No, you, I couldn't. I know? couldn't. I mean, I fly back to London quite regularly, Chris. Yeah. To see all the mates. I mean, all the young kids nowadays on the scene. I mean, in our day, it was all glam, glam, glam. Yes. As you know. Yes, it was. You know, yeah. all these kids. I mean, I, I know that little little kid. Um, 
she's a sweetheart. She's over at Minnie's quite regularly. Bag of chips. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, but then that Take that is the bag that. Her. She's work. She's working the board like we all did. In that is kids, talent. You know? She has a lot of talent. That one, a lot of talent. She has a talent, but yeah. you know what? I want to tell her about glam. Where did the glam go, babe? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know well, my costume she's, changes. She's, she swapped glam for elegance. Elegance. Is I it? haven't seen the I haven't seen the baby for a long time, you know, Chris. I haven't seen her for such a long time. But Minnie had her up quite a while ago and she's a sweetheart. I did a little spot for her down at the Admiral Duncan. Yes. Bless and that the old the old history with that was the scary thing about that was I was five minutes away from getting blue to smithereens, you know. Yeah. I lived all my life in Belfast. You know, as a 70s kid. <laughs> you, should, you should be I'm used to it over the there. <laughs> then I go to London and then I get myself killed, you know, in, in, in Soho. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought, was with the I've... wonderful Stefan Whitfield at that time. You remember the Way Out Club and Stefan Whitfield? Yes, yes, I did that a few times. Bless us, we were having lunch together after having a row, of course. And um, we, had, we went out together to have a lobster meal run at the Dome on just opposite Balance. And um, five minutes we left, and I said, Stefan, that sounds to me like an explosion. She says, no, it was just too, too quick. I says, it's a bomb, trust me. It was those poor people run at the Admiral Duncan Blue to Smithereens. Isn't that terrible? Yeah, yeah, you were horrible, very lucky. Chris, horrible, but anyway, we saw we 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 got uh, we got out of that. But poor Stefan's gone anyway. She's in the next world, bless mm-hmm. her. When when was the when was the uh, that bomb? What year was that then? That was about that was well. What is he? Stefan's dead about twelve years now. So Gosh, um, twelve years. That must be that must be at least fifteen years. What, yes, fourteen. Yes, yes oh, easy. About fourteen, fifteen years ago. Easy, Christmas. easy, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Quite a while ago, you know. But I'd love you to put a little message out to all your following because um, Minnie's over at the moment. Minnie's the young thing on the scene. Yeah, you know, how old is she? Did you say? Now. Well, I would say young thing because you and I can say that, Chris. Anyway, you know, I'm I'm happy to say that I'm 57, Chris. Oh, you're older than me. I didn't know I'm that. I'm older than you, my love. Trust I didn't me. know I that. Really am. Oh, I didn't I've know that. I've been a little beef on since the time you seen me. I used to get into a nice size 12. Yeah. <laughs> but I, you, you, you need oh, to get don't. Me, you need to get me a good... Um, don't. I need to get a... It's a stretch calf tan I need, Chris. Oh, I'm, I'm putting on that weight now. Stretch. I was okay until I got to 47. And then, um, oh, how do I say this now? Let me see. No, I can't. You started can't say. to put on a little I was all, bit. I was all right till I went to 47. Then I started having to take some pills each day. Yes, yes. But, and, and, and that, that sorted me out medically, but that may also put the, start putting the weight on. Well, I have a little, yeah. uh, you know, well, trust me, the weight, hello. I mean, I'm not humongous, but I'm not the girl yeah. I used to be. Let's put it that way, Chris. Yeah, yeah. But you <laughs> know when, you know really when you look that. in the mirror, I'm sure you look at yourself and you're like 10 times fatter than you actually are. Do you know what I mean? Well, I don't recognise myself. I pass by in the mirror now and I just go, who's that? You know what I mean? Do you know, that's just the way it is. But uh, that's part of getting middle-aged, you know, middle-aged. And I said, Minnie's yeah. on the way to it. I want you to have a quick word and say hello to him. She's shitting herself, but you know what I mean? Excuse the language, people. Sorry, everybody out there, but um, uh, here's Minnie just to say happy Stick birthday. Stick her on. Stick her on. Here. Say a quick hello to Chris, Minnie. Well, hello, darling. Hello, Mark. All right? I'm fine. How are you? Oh, I'm very well. So is it your birthday today? It is. Go on, what are you today, then? Well, I've already... Uh, wait, it should come up on your Facebook. Just answer the question, dear. It's, I am 40, dear. You're 40. You don't look... For, and honestly, the last time... I think I don't remember the last time I saw you, but you, you still was, look it, like... It, it you, was, you've uh, always King looked... At King, uh, Central Station, King Cross. You always look like a small child to me. You well, still do. You, the first time you ever met me, I was 17... Right. ...at the Penny Farthing. Wow. Uh, the like time goes, and, and look, look what On a we Sunday can. Sunday afternoon, we used to do the the uh, the buffet. Yes, yes. Oh, I used to. Yeah. Oh, the buffet, the yeah. buffet there. Oh, what used to happen? You see, the buffet would come down, but I wouldn't announce it until I'd gone round with my plate. <laughs> <laughs> did you notice that? <laughs> yes, I did, dear. <laughs> oh, but yes, yeah, that was the first time that. we met with. Uh, Lily, Lily, Lily Lemon, when she was DJing. DJ Lily Lemon, that's right, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, 17, darling. I, I, well, I, was, I shouldn't be allowed in the pub then. No, well, we all did it, didn't we? I think we I went into a pub at 16 exactly, years old. Do you know, the only time I was asked 
for identity was on my 21st birthday. And that funny, really? I've been going in pubs for about six years before well, that. The only time I was ever asked for my ID, only screen to straight bars. Right. I was asked for ID. Well, you look so young all the time. I don't know how you do it. You must be having some facial work done there, I reckon, I've Mark. had no facial... The only, the only facial work I've had done is my teeth. Oh, have you had your teeth done? I have. But everything else is, everything else is all natural. Are, are they screwing I dye, teeth? I dye my hair, because there's a few bit, there's a few greys coming through. So Mine's all come I've out! Got to, like, I've got this big... That. I've got this big... Take take them away. I've got this big bald bit in the middle. And do you know what? The funny thing is, Mark, whenever I eat something spicy, good examples of this would be spaghetti arabata. You know that one? Yes. Or Cajun chips from Five Guys. If I eat those, the top of my head where it's bald gets all sticky and sweaty. (laughs) Well, yesterday we were down the coast and we were having uh, duck sausages with hoisin sauce. And Paula Pure was sweating because there was spice in in the sauce, and she was sweating because she couldn't cope with the spice. She's reached that age that she can't cope with hot stuff anymore. Oh, isn't that funny? And she was literally sweating. You can see the sweat. The, the bees are sweat. I think it must be an age thing, darling. I've not I've not reached that bit yet, but oh, how well, funny! The menopause. How funny! Menopause for her. <laughs> Well, listen, right, you have a lovely I'll birthday. You, I shall be I'll singing you happy go. birthday at the uh, end of the show, all right? Uh, Miss, Miss Paula wants to say goodbye to you. Oh, OK, right, yeah. Darling, Cheerio now, Mark. Bye-bye. Soon. Where are you, right. Miss P? Are you still there? Yes, Chris, Chris, just, Chris, it's Paula back again, darling. Nice to talk to you, I darling, all right? Out there. You've got a lot of... You, what's your, what's your um, statistics on your listeners? Oh, I don't worry about numbers. Bollocks to that, Jolly. I don't I worry that much. Everybody out there, I want to say to everybody out there, listen, all you people, vote for Chris Reardon or put a petition in because I believe personally he should be with Capital Radio or the BBC <laughs> because he's one, he's one of the best DJs in the whole of the UK. I hardly DJ now. I gave up most of the DJing to do karaoke. Well, darling, do you know what? You're better than karaoke. You're better than everything. Because oh, you've go away. To give, and you've got, a great, you've got a great spiel because one of my favourite times was working with you at the Penny Farthing at Hammersmith. And I'm telling you, for me to do a cabaret show, I felt insignificant in comparison to getting <laughs> on after you because you were so professional. I mean it, Chris. I'm not just licking your ass or anything. I couldn't believe you to me. I'm listening to a friend of mine who's on the DJ booth right beside me and he should be on the major major radio circuits and I believe everybody out there put a word in for Chris Reardon because he's the best out there well you're we'll very kind week. Paula Pierre we'll come and see you next week because I'm flying to London on Wednesday lovely so do me a favour just do me a favour send us a couple of pictures of your ass I'd love to see what's around your ass like oh, the country Chris, and all you that. know what I'm, I, I did the best thing I had a lovely apartment in London darling yeah. and I did I did well because I got five times the amount of what I paid for that mother okay. and I moved back home to my family I've got them all around me in the mountains I live in the mountains excellent and Chris I've got five bloody gardens I've got to attend <laughs> to now five I don't have to go. I've got another call now, my darling. At the drive. And I never thought I would be able to get this kind of thing in life. I mean, I'm not a millionaire or anything, but I have a lovely home, Chris, and I'm proud of the hell of it. None of us are millionaires, are we? I've got a lovely place as well. But, darling, listen, if we can get in touch with you sometime next week when you're about there, we're watching your show right now. We've got it on the TV here. All right, my darling. So I'll see you, and I wish you all the very best, and I hope everybody out there is going to do you favours and get you further, because that's what I want to see you, right up there. In the Thank main you very screen. much. Have a lovely afternoon. And I wish you, wish you all the best, Chris. Take right. care and God Cheerio bless. Cheerio now. Love. Bye-bye. Sorry, there we are. Bye, love. Bye-bye. Northern Bye. Ireland there with Paula Pure. Um, Paula was a, a drag queen that I worked with for many years, actually. Let me just put that in there. There we are. Uh, years and years ago, actually. I haven't worked with her for... Um, uh, just a minute. I haven't worked with her for some years now because I don't do much cabaret now. I don't really do much cabaret except at Central Station, OK? Uh, still time to get a call in. 0208 344 if you want to say hello to us this afternoon. Hello to uh, Craig who says, Ah, the free papers, the Metro. They're the ones that I go and nick at the train station to put down for my cat litter. I get one for my mum and dad and uh, for my 80-year-old friend who is a close, dear friend of ours who goes shopping with Asda and Morrison's. I quite like Asda. Yeah, I like Asda and Morrison's. His name is Dave and he lives with his sister, Ellie, Ellen, who's 92 years old. Well, you can't be bad if you get the 92, can it? I'm hoping to get to a very... I'm hoping to get into my hundreds and I will continue to do these shows. I shall. 
um, is doing fantastic. Eats well and her memory is great. Such a lovely lady. Thank you, Craig. Nice to hear from you, sir. Hello to Maria Tasu, who says, uh, I hope I say that right, T-S-U, Tasu, Tasu. Sa, Sue, I think that's right. Maria. Hello, Maria, who loves all the comedy shows that we were talking about um, earlier. And uh, she also particularly loves Mrs. Brown's Boys. I don't think I've watched that Mrs. Brown Boys. I must admit. Um, Diane says, I like Dick Emery. You are awful, but I like you was hilarious. You've got to look this up on YouTube, gang. You must look up uh, Dick Emery on YouTube. It will have you laughing in stitches. I'm sure it will. And, and please write back to me and tell me what you thought of Dick Emery, OK? Uh, Maria's going to come along to the next karaoke. Oh, you, you better get a song in, Maria. All right. Um, Rory says, which drag artist didn't you get on with? Still trying to find out. Well, I read that out on the show, Rory. I did read that out on one of the shows. You can't, if you miss shows, you miss half of it. I'm afraid I can't go backwards, Rory. You're going to have to go back through all the old shows now and find it. If you miss a show, you miss out. I mean, last week, we gave away a holiday for two in Barbados, lovey. If you'd have been there, you might have won it yourself. You can't just jump. Jump in and out. Hello to Peter Hyde, who says he's a bit late. He's apologising for being late. OK, Peter, that's OK. <laughs> Anyone else want to call 0208144 um, good news about the computer, incidentally. You remember I was asking you, and I'd asked a couple of times. I kept getting this thing. You know where you go to shut down? Oh, hang on. The pen's gone wrong again now. The, the top keeps disappearing into this pen for some reason. I don't know why that is. Grant, are you calling back in now? I've got a line free. Might get to you this time. You've got to be quick, dear. What's wrong with this pen now? Do you like this? Wendy bought me this. Lovely, isn't it? One minute. Nope. Oh, hang on. Oh, I don't know why that... The top won't come out of this. I think the... the th Maybe if I stick a bit of paper in it. Hang on a minute. Perhaps if I get a bit of paper in it, that might push it out, mightn't it? <laughs> what you're thinking now is why don't you just get another one? Well, because I like this one. This is a nice pen, this is, with my little Union Jack flag on it. Maybe if I get a bit, a bit of paper there and stuff. Shove that into my pen like that. One minute. Is that going to work? No, that's not going to work either, is it? Oh. oh, dear. Oh. I'll have to send it away. Can I send this away for... Look at it. Look at this lovely pen. It sparkles. I'll have to get a normal old big pen. How boring is that? Look at this. Where have I nicked this one from? Flamingos. Las... Oh, Flamingos, Las Vegas. I've stayed at this hotel. Anyone stayed at the Flamingo in Las Vegas? It is the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest hotel there possibly is there. And it's very nice. Now, here's a little amusing story. <clears throat> oh, yes, the computer, I meant to tell you. So the computer, what was happening is that I would go shut down or sign out. And it kept saying shut down and update. Well, uh, yesterday it was, I, I did a, a, a Windows update. And it was a very big one. It went on for ages. Must have been, been about an hour and a half or so. And that stopped doing that now. So that if you are having that problem yourselves, that's the answer. You must do a Windows update, especially since all those viruses were going around at the weekend, attacking the NHS, among others. I hope it didn't attack your computer, did it? Dreadful. You've got to do those Windows updates as soon as they come along. OK, so in that search thing, if you're on a Windows thing, just type in Windows update and then follow the instructions and do the update. OK. Here's something a bit rude for you. In this morning's Daily Mail, BBC presenter accidentally touches a Corbyn supporter's breast. How awful. Yes, indeed. Uh, news anchorman Ben Brown. Always very sure of himself. I quite like the BBC News people. Is there anyone I don't like on the BBC News team? No, there isn't. Oh, there's a very good looking lad on at night. Oh, he's lovely. Anyone seen him? He does like really late, like two o'clock in the morning. He's thin about... He can't be older than about 26. 26, 20. Oh, he's gorgeous. You've seen him? I don't know what his name is. The young one on the BBC News 24 channel at night. Yes. I, I think we should bring back Moira Stewart. I liked her. Do you remember her? 
Very, very nicely. Moira Stewart, I liked her. Anyway, news anchorman Ben Brown was speaking to his colleague, assistant political editor Norman Smith, about the launch of the Labour Party election manifesto in Bradford when the men were interrupted by a member of the public. Well, I wouldn't have any of that for a start. If I was doing a BBC show and a member of the public interview, I would have them beaten. They Get back! Beat them! Beat them back! Get back from me! That is the only way to deal with these people. Anyway, the woman who was carrying several bags... Now, did it say Labour? Or oh, probably Audi bags then. Uh, the woman who was carrying several bags and wearing a leopard print top. How ghastly is that? Oh, my God, a leopard print top. Well, we already know what sort of person she is, don't we, dear? You know, a leopard print top. She was wearing a leopard print top and black jacket, stood between the pair and said, absolutely fantastic. But she was quickly brushed aside by uh, Brown, the presenter. Uh, she brushed aside? No, she needed to be beaten back. Beat them. She was quickly brushed aside by Brown, whose right hand appeared to touch her breast as he tried to move her out of shot, with the woman subsequently hitting him. <laughs> I love it! The as-yet-unnamed woman slapped him on the shoulder before walking off across the camera. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hopefully stand next to him as well, see if I can get my breasts touched. I think I'm growing breasts. Look. Look, it's not nice, is it, dear? I think you could, I could, perhaps I could have those breast reduction surgeries. You know, where they stick a little, basically, you know, they stick a straw in. A little man sucks out the fat, doesn't he? Spits it into somewhere else. That's how they do it. Did you know that? All that fat reduction, what's it called? Liposuction. What happens is they get, obviously not a normal straw. They get a metal straw and they make a little cut. Presumably, you have injections around the cut area so you don't feel that happening. And they put a little metal straw in there and a little man comes and sucks out that... <laughs> and spits it into... <laughs> and then they take the fat, they recycle that down the local chip shop and cook your chips in it. That is how they do liposuction. I expect it to be appearing on an episode of Casualty or Holby City very soon. Yes. Um, as the video of the incident went viral on the internet, cameraman uh, said, bit of boob by Ben Brown. It's outrageous, isn't it? You see, they're at it again at the BBC, touching women's breasts without their permission. Not my cup of tea, of course, Dan. You go around touching breasts. Here, please, if you want to touch breasts, for God's sake, ask their permission first. I don't know, does that, how does that work if you're actually in bed? You know, you're laying down. Sort of get a little bit fruity. Excuse me, can I touch your breast, please? Or would you just do it? How does that work? <laughs> Ghastly people. Um... <laughs> Rory, I'm sorry, I'm not answering you, darling. I've already answered the question in one of these world-famous global shows that I do, darling. If you miss a show, you miss out. You know, let, let, me, let me put it this way for you, Rory. Right, if you were watching Casualty tonight and something happened and you weren't sure how it what got to it, if you rang the BBC and said, oh, I missed an episode of Casualty about eight weeks ago, could you tell me what happened? Would they tell you? No. Same here, darling. Same here, lovey. I'm afraid you're going to have to watch the old shows to find out the answer to that question, lovey. OK? Um... Joanna says, Ari the pen, did you lose the spring? Ah, oh, is that what's happened? Oh, I've lost the pen now. I don't know. There was, there, a, there was never a bit at the top. No, there isn't a, um, hang on. There isn't a, you know, a ch -ch -ch at the top. It just, and I don't think it's long enough. It, see, if I push that in there, so how does that turn? Oh, turn that. Hang on. I don't know. There's, 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 a cause, yeah, there's a tiny bit of it coming through, but not all of it. Why don't it turn round? I think it's broken, dear. I'm really just because I love this pen. Wendy, regular correspondent to the show and Barry Manilow ticket purchaser for me, um, has sent me various things over the years, which I, I treasure. 
but the, this I don't think it's I don't think that thing's long enough hang on what, what oh I've just pulled the thing off the top now I wonder what that does I bet there'd be ink flying out everywhere oh, what happens if I do that hang on oh look aha now what happens if I put that top on there look look the nibs come out one minute Oh, we might be successful here. One moment, please. Oh, that won't screw on now. One minute. Oh, it doesn't screw on. Okay. Now, what happens if I write? If I write... Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it's gone back in again. Oh, dear. No, I don't think there's a spring in there, Joanna, but thank you for your DIY help with Joanna. Oh, yes. Um, Rory says at your age, dear, that you're lucky they're not sagging. They are sagging. Look, can't you see? Open your eyes, dear. You must have one of those computers with very low resolution. You can't see what's going on, can you? Hello to Kim Whip, who's up in uh, Lincolnshire today. Hello, Kim. Uh, Maria says, I'm never having chips on a chip shop. Well, that's what they do with all the fat love. They suck it out of your waist, <laughs> spit it into a tin, and they send it out to the local chip shop. What's well, better than just uh, burying it in the ground, isn't it? I would have thought. Yes. Mm. <laughs> um, no, but well, there's no spring in this. Maybe there should be a... Maybe I can take a spring out of something else. Let me see. Is this... Metro Springs. One moment, please. Maybe there's a spring in this I can use. One minute. Oh, there's a thing in here. A little thing. Look. What's that do? No, I can't get the spring out. What does this do, then? Look. What if I put that there? Put that in there. Oh, it works if I don't push it too hard. Because what seems to be happening is that this bit here doesn't screw with this bit. Well, that's all right for now. That's all right for now. I'm going to chuck the Metro one away. Thank you. So I have to pop into the bank and nick another one of those now. Thank you. Thank you for your kind help there, my darling. Um, how are we doing on time? I think it's time to go, actually. Look at the time. Yep, we'll have to disappear now, boys and girls, because I've got to go to bed in a minute. Uh, ready for my uh, quiz night tonight. I'm hosting a quiz night tonight. Uh, quiz tonight, every Wednesday at the King's Head Theatre Bar in Upper Street, Islington. If you want to come along to that tonight, it's completely free to pay, uh, play. Top prize is a £30 bar tab. A second prize is a bottle of wine and the people right at the very bottom, although there are no bottoms. There are no bottoms here, but well, perhaps me, but there are no bottoms. OK, but the person who gets the least points gets a free bag of crisps. Hooray. And you get to choose the flavour. It don't get much better than that, does it? Eh? You actually get to choose the flavour of the crisps. So that's the quiz tonight at the King's Head Theatre Bar, Upper Street, Islington. There's four rounds of questions. There's a general knowledge current affairs type round. There's a picture round. There's a theatre round, which is usually low scoring. Don't worry if you get a low score for that. And the music round tonight is Old Gits, Dead or Alive. OK, so there'll be 10 little bits of music. You have to tell me who's singing it and the title of the song. And tonight's theme for the music round is they, that they are all very old, older than me even. And they're all uh, possibly a lot of them are dead as well. OK, did you know there's a radio, there's a radio station called Radio Dead and they only play music from dead people. And it's fantastic. The music's great. The music, none of this Beyonce stuff, dear. And Jay-Z and who's that other one who does all that rapping? Uh, Kane West, or whatever his name is. Dreadful noise, dear. Ghastly dreadful noise. No! Proper singers. Frank Sinatra. Da, 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 da. So that's, that's Radio Dead. Look it up. I think you'll find that one on the internet, OK? Right, today's birthday's then. Happy birthday. Talking of radio, happy birthday today to the excellent Keith Jackson. Ba, 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 from My Soul Radio. He does a radio show on My Soul, which is a London station. I'm sure it's also available on the internet. I think he's on Saturdays. Happy birthday, Keith. I didn't know you were 45, mate. Honestly, I thought you was about 32, 33. 45 years old. Happy birthday, Keith. Happy birthday today to Jason Taylor. Not looking bad for 39, sir, I must say. Uh, Mark. A uh, little Mark, we were talking on the phone to earlier. Happy birthday, Mark. 40 today, I think you said. Kathy Bronway. 
Andrew Bryant, 55 today. Chanel, oh, what a wonderful name. Chanel Elizabeth Tiati, I think it's how you say it. 27 today. Paul Thomas, it's his birthday today. And Sarah Stickley today is 45 years old as well. So here comes the song, gang. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. All right. Happy birthday, you wonderful, wonderful people. Have a wonderful uh, Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? Isn't it? Have a wonderful Wednesday for your birthday. Okay, whatever you're doing, enjoy yourselves. And uh, that's almost it today. Uh, Maria says, I used to play darts at the Golden Lion. Hope to meet you there. Enjoy your show. Have a great day. I don't work at the Golden Lion anymore, Maria. Uh, I left there some months ago. However, I'm at Central Station in King's Cross on Mondays and Fridays. If you watch my wall, <clears throat> excuse me, if you watch the wall, it'll tell you when I'm there, all right? Uh, have a nice day, boys and girls. Thank you very, very much for watching and listening to the show today. I'll see you again very soon. Cheerio now.